like our uh, logins have slowed down a little bit, but uh, I'm sure we'll get some more coming in a little bit later. Um, for Welcome to our Webinar Wednesday series. Um, again, this week, um, we have a very good topic this week. Our, our Philip Perry will be talking about HatchCom 4 system and wonderful way to manage our hatcheries and our incubation equipment and everything. Um, as we get started here, um, um, let me tell you, there's a there's a poll down at the bottom and hopefully those that are coming in a little bit later in this will see it. But if you would take the time real quickly to click on the poll button, answer that question and kind of give us an idea of where everybody stands as far as whether you have Hatchcom or what version you might have. So um, if you can click on that um, and we can kind of give, it, give Philip an idea of the type of audience he's talking to. Um, so Philip Perry's been with James Way, um, I guess I've never figured out exactly how many years, I would say 30 something years total in incubation, um, you know, over 10 years with James Way. So he's got a significant amount of um, experience, both as a managing a hatchery and as a consultant with James Way. I've been a lot of hatcheries um, all over the world, so it comes with a, a wealth of information and knowledge. And he'll be talking with us about the um, HatchCom 4 system. Um, down on the bottom, um, you'll see a Q&A box. If you have questions at any time through this presentation, type in your questions. We'll get to them at the end. If you have questions afterwards, you can type those in and we'll answer them after the fact as well. So um, next week, we will not have a um, webinar offered for Asia, but we will have one on, in the U.S. on alarms. And you're certainly welcome to log into that to learn a little bit about our, our alarms and keeping them working and how they help us in our hatcheries. So um, look for that, but it but unfortunately will not be offered for the Asia time slot. So with that, um, I'm going to let Philip Perry um, take over with his presentation. He's got a lot of good information. You will get this, this copy of recording of this presentation afterwards. In the next day or so, you'll get an email with a link to this presentation that you can review it at your leisure, ask questions after you've seen it a little bit later, and, and um, we can we can get back with you at that time. So with that, Philip, you want to take over and, and go with this, and, and we'll see you when he's completed and, and entertain the questions yeah. that y'all have. So Philip, okay. go ahead. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate everyone showing up, and uh, I'm going to get my uh, presentation up. And... Uh, uh, we're going to talk about HatchCom 4, the Hatchery Manager's Manager, and uh, we'll be uh, uh, reviewing some of its uh, uh, applications, some of the things that we have uh, that we can use with it. Um, so uh, let's get started. Uh, so HatchCom 4, it's a complete hatchery monitoring software system. Uh, it contains the tools you need to make decisions effectively and to increase your productivity. Um, I know uh, HatchCom 3, some of our audience, I'm sure uh, we'll see at the end of the poll, uh, just how many we may have some uh, uh, people that already have that software and using it to manage your hatchery. But uh, uh, HatchCom 4, it's a, it's a powerful and versatile program designed to manage any hatchery that uses James Way single stage, multi-stage or guardian HVAC control system and also it can control all, all three of these. Uh, so it, it has a uh, wealth of power uh, with it uh, for monitoring and, and doing different various uh, things. And uh, we'll review some of these. There's several new features uh, compared to HatchCom 3. Uh, one you'll see here, it's a complete redesign of the user interface with a bright new look. Um, of course, you can change these colors yourself, but uh, this is uh, what the demo looks like, and this is what your hatchery could look like on your, on your computer screen while you monitor it. So uh, one thing you'll notice is the visual feedback of machine status through the use of collars. So the collars show uh, that machines are running normally, alarming, uh, running a profile, pre-warming, shutting down. Uh, so you can tell at a glance uh, how your uh, machines are operating. We have a, uh, over here, let me get my uh, pointer going here. Yeah, so over here, uh, I'll, we'll, let's look at these two machines. We've got two single st uh, stage chicken incubators 
and they're in this nice green collar. This means that the machine is running a profile, uh, not an alarm, just running a profile. Uh, here we have two uh, ice blue machines. Uh, these incubators, if we look over here, are processing a pre-warm step. And uh, this machine here, the unit's alarm system is bypassed. And then here we have a multi-stage hatcher <clears throat> that is, has an active alarm going off uh, right now. So we would look at that, uh, we would see the red. And then if we see this uh, maroon collar, this would uh, notify us that this unit, uh, number four, has been an alarm, but it's recovered and it's running normally. And you would have to open it up and silence it uh, like you would a platinum machine. Uh, and we'll look at uh, how to clear some of our alarms. But uh, anyway, these are just uh, a very good visual. You can have this uh, on your up on your computer screen, get a quick, quick glance of uh, what's happening uh, throughout your hatchery with the machines and, and what they're doing at uh, uh, any particular time. This is in real time. Uh, of course, these block machines down here, it says status is not available because there was no reply from the machine. So uh, they're not currently not being networked and uh, they're just, uh, they're not communicating, but they are on our layout and we know they're there. A uh, couple of things here, the uh, each uh, single stage machine displayed list uh, has its actual readings. So uh, it's got the day in profile or uh, the temperature it's running at, humidity set uh, actual CO2, our damper opening, and our uh, fan speed. So uh, all of these uh, on the uh, layout, you'll see uh, being active. If you would uh, press on this and bring up uh, the next uh, icon, uh, the machine state for incubator number two would come up. And so uh, as you can tell this, uh, for those of you who have the platinum machine, <clears throat> this looks just like a platinum screen, except there's an exit down here. Uh, and the, these are moved over to the side, but uh, very similar in the layout scheme of things. Uh, the uh, actuals are in this uh, uh, highlighted in yellow in a, in a blue font. And then our uh, set points are in the black underneath uh, percentage wise. And uh, our day in incubation hours, uh, uh, when the, um, uh, machine was set. All this information is on this machine. Uh, also, this would be this would show if we had the over alarm override would be on. So uh, again, this is what a uh, single stage machine looks like on Hatchcom Four. Uh, this is a multi stage. Uh, here we have uh, just temperature and humidity shown in wet bulb uh, for a uh, multi stage incubator. Uh, if we would uh, double click. Um, Let's see now. Okay, kind of. There we go. So if we double click on the on the icon, this comes up for our multi stage. So as you can see, uh, very very similar to a platinum layout screen. Uh, we have our temperature set point, our actual humidity set point uh, is showing that the damper is uh, opening uh, or closing, either one. Uh, shows the egg position. And then uh, we also have uh, some other features here for a graph numeric and set point report are now located right on the icon for the machine state. So we don't have to go uh, as we do in Hatchcom 3, if you're familiar with it, you would go to a file and open it. You can also lock your set points uh, from here uh, and uh, uh, just uh, uh, monitor the alarms from here would show up. So. You, uh, just some of the things, features that Hatchcom 4 has for the uh, multi-stage. Next, uh, we're going to show the uh, uh, room uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and the plenum displays uh, actual readings. So if you have a guardian system now or a guardian panel, you can link it to your Hatchcom and you would be able to monitor this from your hatch, uh, from your office or wherever your Hatchcom have access to your Hatchcom. Uh, when we double click on our uh, uh, icon, uh, we bring up the room and again, this uh, the, the HVAC state uh, screen looks uh, very similar to our platinum uh, set point, uh, only we have our pressure. Uh, this is in the inches water column. You, you can change your preferences if you'd want it in Pascal's. Uh, 
Uh, it shows our damper position. It shows that this is being, uh, it's in an automatic mode. It's not in manual. So this damper, it can be fluctuating uh, to maintain our uh, pre room pressure. Uh, we have some other features here that we'll discuss. Uh, uh, again, we can graph, uh, do a numeric report, set point report, various options. Uh, now, uh, by using this screen, when we go to view and see what, see what our rooms are doing. So uh, there's many new features in HatchCom 4. We get, we get asked all the time, uh, what, what is the difference between HatchCom 4 and HatchCom 3? Uh, I think we counted, uh, kind of stopped counting around 16 when we just started adding them all up. But uh, one thing uh, is uh, an integrated manual. And uh, I'll, I'll try to review that a little bit with you. Uh, but it's a, a context sensitive help in each window. So uh, as we bring up that machine, uh, we can go right to the uh, manual without either having a uh, paperback or a um, uh, going to a, a PDF. It actually goes straight to whatever you're looking at. And again, we'll review that. Uh, another new feature is it has a scheduled maintenance system. So this allows uh, setting and tracking a maintenance task. Uh, so you can uh, make sure that uh, your preventive maintenance uh, is, all, is up to date so that we don't have a breakdown when, it's, uh, when it can be real critical. Uh, you can remote in on PCs and tablets. Uh, this can be networked from anywhere having access to the main Hatchcom PC. Uh, we'll discuss that a little bit. It has uh, client privileges, so you're not interfering with other workers. Uh, who may be on at the same time, uh, has an automatic database uh, backup uh, function, uh, keeps data secure. Uh, the old database backups can be loaded into Hatchcom for inspection. Uh, all report and graph screens are independent. Uh, so uh, what this means is that the user, you're free to drag them to other screens when available. So what you could do is uh, if you wanted to compare uh, uh, two incubators side by side for behavior, uh, you could open up both graph screens at the same time and look at them and compare uh, one to the other. And uh, also reports, anything uh, like that, you can, you can have two, two of them open. It's not just one. The other is uh, you can select a group of machines to perform actions. So uh, you can uh, start profiles if you're setting uh, three incubators at a time. Uh, you can start to profile together so you don't have to individually start to profile if they all start at the same time. Uh, you can generate reports uh, and uh, set up your maintenance schedule uh, so that uh, you can do these tasks in one operation. There's uh, easier editing of the HASRI layout screen. Uh, new commands allow you to uh, undo changes or arrange a group of machines. So uh, if you're familiar with the layout from our uh, uh, from HatchCom 3, editing was really a, a pain uh, to do. It, uh, you didn't have a, uh, once you made a change, it you would have to go and uh, manually make, do, the, remove the change and then put it back. Uh, now it's just like uh, any other, like uh, a Windows-based program, there's just an undo button and you can change it. So again, very easy uh, for editing. Uh, transfer function. So uh, you can, uh, copy the incubator profile start date uh, up to four hatchers. So you don't have to uh, uh, write it down on a piece of paper and go to each hatcher and put in the uh, um, transfer, the set date. So you have your um, profile start date for your hatchers are, are correct. This uh, allows you just to take the date directly from the machine and move it out to three or four hatchers. Uh, the Hatchcom text can be translated to most languages. Uh, of course, this is subject to availability. Uh, currently, we have Spanish, uh, simplified Chinese, and traditional Chinese. Uh, these have been done, uh, but uh, if, if you have a language that, that uh, isn't on uh, Hatchcom, again, uh, most of these can be uh, uh, translated over. Of course, you'd need someone that is familiar that's doing the translation with, uh, with hatchery terms and terminology, but again, uh, this is, uh, can be translated for us. So uh, th those are just a few of the many uh, features that are different from Hatchcom 3. 
So we're going to take a look at uh, pick. I picked out a few of these, and uh, we'll we'll go through uh, just to sort of give you an idea of what uh, how some of these work. So when we talk about an integrated manual, uh, what we're looking at. So uh, when solving problems, uh, you may find it convenient to use the Hatchcom help file. There are several ways to open this file. So uh, if we click on a on the incubator room as an example, and we uh, come up and uh, press the uh, help uh, icon up in the corner, then this will open up that dialog for this screen. And uh, so now I'd like to uh, jump over to the demo and I'll show you how this works. Let me get a two, uh, there we go. So uh, here's our uh, layout of our hatchery. Uh, and right here we have a help sign right here. So if we just uh, take a click on that right here, this brings us up to the main screen layout. So again, everything is right at your, uh, anything you have a question about or, or how to access or whatever pops up on this uh, help screen for whatever, uh, whatever you're viewing at that time. And list each, uh, all of these activities uh, are here and then uh, what each uh, individual icon represents and what it does. So I'll click out of this. Um, let's just open up a machine, take a look. Uh, here, um, we're looking at incubator two. And if we uh, press the help, then it goes directly to the help uh, uh, here. And we see exactly what we're looking at. We're looking at a single stage and the state of this machine. Uh, and it would tell us if we had icons coming on, uh, if we were heating front rear zone, uh, basically uh, it tells us everything that uh, is displayed on our screen at this particular time. So many, it's a really uh, cool feature uh, to uh, uh, use. Uh, another example would be the graph screen. Again, we have an icon up here, a help. Uh, we can press on that, goes right directly to uh, the single stage graph gives a definition of everything uh, and uh, uh, what what's what the functions are. Uh, here here we see uh, the load graph or previous machine, load graph or next machine. So then when we look back here at our icon, we can uh, uh, we know what these are now and how to how they function. We can change our machines here and look at various machines. So again, uh, uh, very handy uh, tool, useful tool uh, for finding uh, 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 when you have a question about a particular uh, uh, thing on the screen, you can go to that and, and see what's going on. So now I'd like to go back uh, to our presentation. Uh, the other is, uh, another new feature is the uh, scheduled maintenance system. So uh, when we uh, click on our uh, maintenance button, on our uh, layout screen, uh, this comes up. So scheduled maintenance uh, report allows you to set periodic maintenance tasks for incubators and HVAC units and keep track of these tasks that have not yet been completed. Uh, the tasks can be general types uh, that are independent of incubators. Um, we, uh, here we have drain compressor tank down here at the bottom. So you could have that uh, set up and then um, then you could have specific to incubators or, or hatchers that you want to, to look at. Uh, we also, uh, um, it, a red feature means that it is, uh, the, the task is overdue and yellow uh, would mean that, that these are the tasks that we have scheduled for this week. And then anything, this is showing us uh, three months on this window, uh, anything out uh, uh, later on uh, are, are things that will be coming due. And I want to go to the demo and, and uh, we'll show you how to set this up. I'm going to go um, here. So again, when we bring up uh, uh, the, the layout, we'll go to uh, the maintenance uh, icon, displays the maintenance reports. And uh, here uh, we, we're looking at what we have assigned, what we have to do for this week. We have a check sensor calibration. Uh, this was due on Monday and Bill, it was assigned to Bill and we had him checking it over, over the weekend. 
So uh, again, uh, all these are highlighted. If you wanna see what's coming out for the next month, uh, you can click on the, uh, the one month and then we see uh, we're gonna, Larry here has been assigned to check the water flow rate at an ECU or check it, uh, sensor calibrations uh, or whatever. Uh, we can see, uh, we can do these and, and assign nodes to them. Uh, when we want to uh, uh, add a task, uh, we just click on this, uh, have a drop down menu. Uh, we can check, uh, check off what we want, want checked, uh, who we want to assign it to, type that name in. Uh, we'll say Bill, and then, uh, then we can uh, do a node. Um, if we want to, when we want to do it, how many times we want, want it done. So if we want to uh, have this uh, happen more frequently, we can change that as well and assign that. Uh, once a task has been completed, we'll say uh, Bill did, did complete this task, we would just highlight it and just uh, hit complete. And then uh, once we do that, it's taken off the screen. And then we can look over here at the completed tasks that have been completed and see what all has been done within our hatchery. So uh, just a very useful tool uh, for uh, keeping things going, keeping things running uh, smooth within your hatchery. And uh, there's also another really cool feature with this. And uh, I'm gonna go back out uh, to our main screen here, uh, to our presentation. And uh, uh, here, show you the next slide. So uh, on top of this, if you have, um, um, Windows, I mean, uh, uh, if you're running version 4.20 on your ink on your display, uh, this is uh, uh, the front of our machine, uh, incubator number one at the display. We now have this uh, maintenance icon right here. So if you if this machine has a uh, task that hasn't been completed, it will uh, now this icon shows up on your platinum and your maintenance guys uh, or uh, can look at this, uh, they can click on it, and uh, this will come up on the screen, and it's showing that this machine needs um, uh, to check the sensor calibration. Uh, they can check it, and then they can uh, press complete, and then, uh, then it'll come up that this task has been completed uh, in any other task. Uh, they can view these and uh, <clears throat> complete them, and um, you'll be able to uh, monitor the um, uh, the results and the tasks that have been completed. Uh, in, the, uh, in the assign name field, uh, we'll show an asterisk it, when it is completed at the machine. Uh, I wanna point that out. Um, if it's completed from a uh, Hatchcom computer, then uh, it'll, it'll show uh, what the, the name of whoever is using that computer uh, will show up as who completed the task. So, uh, any, anyway, just a really uh, cool feature, and I hope uh, some of our Hatchcom 4 users uh, in our audience are using that now. And if you're not, uh, again, just a very useful tool. And uh, if you don't have 4.20 or greater on your um, uh, update on your uh, machine display, let us know and we'll get you updated on that. And uh, so you'll have this uh, feature of having this icon right on your machine. Um, <clears throat> another uh, cool function with the uh, Hatchcom 4 is our HVAC scheduling. Uh, this function is used to set a schedule uh, for a guardian controlled room or plenum where Hatchcom automatically changes uh, the set points or modes of operations. And it can do this uh, up to four times a day. Uh, so you would bring up your, uh, from your uh, layout, click on your incubator room, Schedule uh, comes up, click on schedule, and then uh, this uh, window comes up. So this would uh, uh, give us all the different changes we can make. Uh, and you could reduce some energy costs. Let's say, uh, you know, your chick holding room is only used, you only hatch uh, four times a week, so you only hold chicks in there for four days. And uh, so, so you could uh, uh, turn the heat off or uh, check, make different settings so that there's no de uh, demand for energy on that room when not in use. Another room, uh, if you have on our guardian system, service room, washroom, storage box, hallways, uh, we, we wouldn't want to be uh, 
doing any scheduling on our uh, incubator rooms uh, or our uh, hatch rooms. Although some multi-stage hatcheries have used this uh, because they like to, to cool their multi-stage machines down to uh, uh, 95 or 94 degrees to hold chicks once the hatch is completed, they'll go ahead and program a, uh, a schedule and just have that, that set on the schedule so that every Wednesday or whenever the hatch is starting to peak and they're starting to drop their cooling down, they can uh, do that for that room. Again, if it's, uh, if it's connected to Hatchcom uh, through our Guardian system, uh, a very, very good feature for energy savings and uh, also uh, you know, to help uh, uh, in chick quality, depending on how you use it. Um, Next, I'd like to uh, uh, review the, uh, the group selection feature. So uh, when we do this, when we select a group selection on our layout, uh, the, uh, this comes up across the top and uh, we can select machines and uh, uh, select as many as we want and make a change either to set or, or whatever uh, uh, to our set dates. Um, and, uh, or we can silence uh, alarms if, say like you have a uh, air compressor go down and all your machines start having turn failure. Uh, you could select those uh, and silence those. Uh, uh, again, many features. Let's uh, go to the demo, just to look at that real quick. And uh, so here is our, uh, 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 layout. Um, if, the, if there's no room selected, I mean, if there's no machine selected, then uh, this feature isn't up here. But uh, if, we, if we click on our group selection, now uh, it shows what we can uh, do any group uh, changes on. Uh, and, and the machine will, will, will be grayed out like this. Uh, if we choose these three, we can do a set date or whatever. Let's, uh, uh, let's just take, uh, we'll take these two here. Let's say we're gonna make a set on uh, incubator two, get one off and three. And then we go, we're gonna start a profile on these. We're gonna do select two. Uh, we're gonna do a, uh, uh, these are gonna be set on Friday. We're gonna set them at uh, 2200 hours. We would say, okay. Uh, it would have our standby settings. Um, and we're gonna, let's say we wanna hold them at uh, 70 until the profile starts, uh, 65 humidity, 5% damper, say okay. And then, uh, so these two, two machines are now an alarm, but uh, we have changed uh, both of these are running on the same uh, standby setting currently. Uh, and we changed them all. So uh, again, a very cool group setting. I wanna change these back. Um, I'm gonna do the group, have to do the group. This, we're gonna start our profile. Let's, um, let's say we had them on the 29th and just to uh, get our dates uh, similar. So this machine right now, the uh, maroon, it uh, was in alarm. We can see that it had a, a high temp and um, low humidity grayed out. Uh, we can uh, silence that, take those off, machine turns to normal. Uh, this machine is still an alarm. It has a, uh, a low temp uh, at this time and a uh, high humidity. So when I changed this, uh, we went from a 72 degree machine standby mode and it, uh, uh, now it's warming up. Both heater bars are on, showing that we had a high temp alarm recovered uh, this is showing a uh, low temp alarm on both, both the front of the machine and the rear. And we also have low humidity at this time. We have an active uh, alarm showing here. You can bypass this machine and, uh, uh, until it recovers if you want uh, or however you would uh, uh, manage it. Uh, but there is uh, those features. Turns uh, uh, orange, which we showed in our previous callers. Uh, again, just uh, a uh, really neat application uh, for you that you can just uh, look very quickly uh, and see what all we're doing. Um, I guess while I'm here, uh, uh, there's another group uh, selection. Um, 
No, I think I've done, done that. So let's go back to our presentation. Uh, I'll tell you, I am going to go ahead and do this. So as I uh, mentioned earlier, you can uh, uh, go ahead and move uh, the set date on this machine uh, to a hatcher. So uh, this is 14 days in incubation. Uh, to do this feature, instead of coming here and going through setup, you just right click, hover over your machine, right click, choose transfer, and then we're gonna choose uh, this, uh, this hatcher and this hatcher uh, as the two that will receive the, uh, the new changes on the dates. We hit the transfer fig, and uh, uh, this pops up, uh, hatcher number two and hatcher number three are the two we selected. Uh, the profile, if we had a different profile, it would be listed here, we would shoot, select it. We wanted to see if that was the profile we wanted to use. We could look at it here uh, and hit the OK button. OK, and so uh, now we've changed uh, these two machines to match this machine. Uh, uh, again, another uh, great feature uh, that, that saves you having to manually go to a, the front of a machine and change uh, several machines, especially for setting uh, uh, large sets when you're using several machines. So go back to the uh, main screen here. So we talked about the transfer, how to do the uh, start date on it. And uh, it's, uh, it's present on all incubators if the incubator is running a profile. Uh, so it allows you to, to change that, uh, those uh, start dates on it. I uh, want to take a little bit uh, now and look at some of the report and graph features uh, that are new. Uh, one thing, uh, uh, when you bring up a machine state, you'll see uh, now we have the graph, the numeric report, and the set point report for this incubator are all located right on the front of our machine state screen. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, useful now, we don't have to go up and open up a file to, to get to each one of these, but for the machine that we wanna look at, but it's selected right here. Uh, this is, uh, this is a multi-stage graph uh, that I use, and uh, often I'll use this uh, when I visit a hatchery, I'll go in and uh, uh, ask to see their hatch comm. And uh, uh, for multi-stage, uh, I'll uh, often look at the uh, spray, see the spray activity, how much is uh, it's calling for. Uh, and I, typically, I, if, if the spray gets over 30%, I think it, it warrants investigating why it's running high. Uh, another uh, feature about the graph, wherever the cursor is located is our uh, particular date, uh, is when this activity took place. Uh, this was Saturday uh, on the 2nd of May uh, at noon. So uh, we can see here when, when eggs are randomly are set in multi-stage every uh, three and four days. So we see where the heater bars went up uh, here in, uh, we see some icons here that show the um, um, percentage amount of time that they would be on. There was no, was not calling for any heat here. Uh, but I just, uh, uh, our, uh, I'll look at the temperature uh, running pretty stable, but I wanna take a look at the, the, this next machine beside of it. So when I looked at this machine, uh, when I was uh, monitoring this hatchery, <clears throat> I noticed the, uh, the humidity was on quite excessively. In fact, if I look here where it is right now on my cursor, uh, it's running 62%. So uh, I know this machine has a problem. Something is going on. Uh, I'm not reaching my set point. Uh, and also my temperature, uh, I've got a variation here of uh, uh, being 90, it's a 98.3 set point. My high was a 98.6 and my low was a, uh, looks like 98 degrees. So uh, very, very uh, large temperature swings here, probably going into alarm occasionally. But uh, anyway, so when I, I uh, reported this, that there's an issue with this machine, they went back and looked and the, uh, the solid state relay uh, was stuck on. So uh, for the heater element. So this heater element was staying on and uh, driving our damper open 
which was we were losing our uh, humidity. Uh, and so the, the nozzles were staying on. And uh, again, just a, a multitude of problems occurring uh, just because that one heater bar was staying on. And uh, uh, because that was staying on, we were having these temperature swings and we were seeing some uh, uh, primary heat activity as well. So again, it's uh, a very useful tool. And, and just because you have a multi-stage hatchery, uh, don't think that it's not for you. It is, it is a very useful tool uh, for that. You can, uh, you can run some uh, profiles uh, in multi-stage hatchers if you like, uh, but it is an excellent monitoring tool uh, for comparing uh, machines uh, and see. And see. Uh, this uh, incident here of where this heat came on for this particular machine, um, calling for heat, uh, they lost their um, heat in their room and it, uh, it's, it was in a cold climate and uh, the temperature reached, I think about uh, 65 Fahrenheit. So uh, started calling for some heat, but, but these are things that you would investigate why these are occurring. And uh, again, uh, just a very useful tool for troubleshooting. Uh, next, I wanna look at a numeric report this is for a uh, platinum uh, dual zone or a, or a 120. Uh, we have our front and rear temperature. And uh, uh, for this particular machine, I uh, set the values uh, on a numeric report uh, for, for one hour. And uh, what I was looking at was the, uh, uh, how long it took this machine to come up to temp. Well, uh, when I look over here, uh, it called uh, for heating uh, the first hour at 100%, by the second hour it dropped off to 50%, and then by the uh, third hour it was well up to temp. And uh, this turned out to be a partial set, uh, so it, but it came up very rapidly. And uh, this is the percentage of the, uh, that the hot water would be flowing for one hour, uh, or for whatever time segment you would have, uh, have it broken down in. And uh, again, over here, we have it by the hour. So it was on for 100% of the time, uh, 60 minutes. It was on 49%, almost 50% in the front, 79% in the rear. And then it kind of just went to nothing. And which is what we see uh, how tight our platinum runs. Once we get that uh, egg mass heated up, uh, in fact, we were calling for just a tad of cooling, just trying to, uh, get the machine stabilized, uh, you know, on that first day. Uh, if you can uh, see over here, you can see where the uh, um, fans ramped up to 100%. Uh, if you're familiar with that, anytime you have a demand of 100%, uh, this, uh, this does ramp up and uh, uh, to help the machine recover quickly. Uh, if, if we have 100% cooling demand, uh, it would ramp up as well. So if you ever have have a uh, a fan speed set and it goes up to 100%, that is why is because there's a 100% demand either for heating or cooling, and it and it just tries to help that machine recover as quickly as possible. Uh, and then it went back down to 90% for our first um, um, day here um, until we uh, lower feed, fan speed even more. I just did a. a a 24 hour period here on the graph, just so we can look at it. And uh, this is the same uh, data that our, the Hatchcom graph is using. This uh, can also be uh, uh, converted into a Excel file. You could save this. And then if you, if you would rather uh, manipulate or look at the data in the Excel format, it's right there for you. Very easy to do. Uh, you just hit the save button and it'll just, uh, uh, save it right into an Excel file. The other report uh, that we had uh, was a set point report. And uh, what this, what a set point report uh, does, anytime you're running a profile, it'll show individual changes uh, in the profile. Uh, there was no action over here, username or anything. So uh, this machine uh, just was going through profile steps here, but uh, when there's a, a, an action uh, and there, it can store um, uh, several of these actions uh, would be a profile canceled, uh, set points are changed, 
profile started, profile started. You know, there was several actions that took place uh, in a very short amount of time on this machine uh, until they uh, canceled it. And then they finally started it here. So I don't, uh, you know, know what was, uh, why they did it. Uh, but when you're investigating things, these are useful tools uh, to find out uh, what, what occurs. So let's say you're, uh, you got, uh, the, the set got set late and you would have went in and investigating and see that, well, they didn't start to profile on time and then they realized they went back in and started. So just, just uh, a lot of useful uh, things can be uh, used in troubleshooting. Uh, down here, we see the sensors were calibrated at uh, one day, seven hours. Um, and then um, uh, they, um, calibrated twice here. So there was two changes. Uh, if they do not do a sensor calibration, but they check the sensors for calibration and there's no value change, then it doesn't record this action. So uh, we'll just have to rely if they do, uh, if you're wanting, if, uh, if someone says they changed it, calibrated, you can uh, cross reference here to make sure they have done it. Uh, any uh, uh, com uh, Hatchcom computer that, uh, uh, if a change is made from that computer, uh, so this profile was canceled on the 27th uh, by the administrator. So uh, that, that, that administrative uh, computer is where the profile was canceled. But if you have, uh, you know, user, username goes by the logon name. And if you create a logon name, uh, you know, called administrator on your home PC and connect remotely to Hatchcom, then that is what shows up. Uh, which probably most hatcheries now uh, have many log on names uh, for the uh, for people that log on uh, to their so that the it would show an accurate name here and uh, and it would show the changes made here again if the changes are made at the display of the machine there's no there's no uh, it's left blank so there's no uh, no record of, of who made the change uh, the alarm call out feature uh, automatically places uh, phone calls uh, or emails to a list of contacts when an alarm occurs. Uh, you can specify uh, alarms which trigger Hatchcom to initiate a call. Uh, you can set the uh, time period during the day when Hatchcom is allowed to call. So uh, if you're uh, uh, working at the hatchery and you uh, your primary alarm uh, you can use it, uh, then you may wanna, wanna disconnect so it's not calling you or, or you know, bothering you uh, throughout the day when you're at the hatchery. Again, you can specify this uh, now. Um, the, uh, another thing, uh, you can set the delay, delay it before Hatchcom calls out. So you could give your uh, machine, uh, say it's bumping a high temp or whatever, uh, you could put a, say a minute or two minute delay in there just to buffer that machine uh, and allow it to get time to recover, just so that you don't have a, a lot of nuisance alarms, we would call, where it would be calling you or emailing you. Uh, one thing about, uh, if it calls by phone, uh, it's a, we're, we're assuming that there is a modem configured and hook up, hooked up to the computer uh, or phone jack. And uh, you would have to, uh, you know, refer to Windows documentation for installing and setting up the modem. Uh, and then if you're using the email functionality, then no modem needs to be connected if you're going to use the, the email uh, uh, to, to uh, let you know that a machine is alarmed. On the, uh, on the telephone call, uh, you just get a call. You, do, you, don't get, you don't know what machine's alarm. You don't know what it what is causing the alarm, what the alarm is, uh, but with the if you have it connected via an email account, then uh, when it uh, when you get the email, it'll have a description of the machine and the alarm that's occurring, so you can uh, uh, you know determine whether uh, you know if the problem uh, persists. If you need to come in uh, right away, you got a hatcher fan that shuts down. Uh, man, you got to get there right away, uh, check things out, or it's a, it's a high humidity. Uh, so you can just uh, maybe ignore that until, until you get to the hatchery, and it doesn't require you get there quite as fast. So again, uh, 
some some people like to use both. They like the phone call to know that there's an alarm has occurred, and then on top of that, get an email uh, stating. Uh, once uh, one thing about the email is that uh, what the Hatchcom is not in charge how fast your server delivers that that um, uh, to you. Uh, you know, usually it's very fast. Uh, you know, it comes you get the email right away. But uh, again, uh, Hatchcom doesn't control that uh, for that uh, email to get to you and uh, let you know that you have an alarm. <clears throat> The Hatchcom 4 uh, is designed as a true client uh, server application. Uh, this means that uh, remote PCs and tablets uh, can be networked from anywhere having access to the main Hatchcom PC. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, feature, you can have two or three workers now uh, on, on a network using Hatchcom through a client doing different uh, jobs or different different activities on Hatchcom. One, one person may be collecting results. Uh, one person may be putting in profiles, but it's not like a shared screen. You, you, in, you have individual, it's a true client server application. So uh, does allow you to have that. Um, and uh, you know, you've got, uh, uh, again, two or three people can be working on it at the same time and uh, gives you um, access that way. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about our PC requirements. Uh, there, uh, an Intel compatible uh, CPU, four gig of memory, 200 gig of hard, hard disk. Of course, we have all this information for you. Uh, uh, we need Windows 7 Professional 64-bit edition or later. So uh, uh, a lot of times I've gone to hatcheries to assist them with their in Hatchcom 4 installation and they bought a computer and it's 32-bit. So uh, it cannot be used for our Hatchcom uh, computer. Now some of the clients uh, you could use a 32-bit but for a uh, for your main Hatchcom uh, it needs to be 64-bit. You'll need uh, one USB port for the security lock. You'll need two additional USB ports when using fiber optic networking. So uh, we still have to use fiber optics on our multi-stage machines. So if you have multi-stage, make sure you get to two ports, uh, two USB ports for uh, connecting those. Uh, and then you need another additional USB port when connecting your Guardian HVAC panel. So that's a total of five USB uh, um, ports that you will need. And you know, I. I got a new computer the other day uh, for my wife and it came, it had five USB ports on it, but uh, you know, just, we just need to make sure these are uh, all on there. Uh, and when you're using ethernet networking, uh, if you to, to uh, connect the Hatchcom out to your network, then you'll need uh, two ethernet ports uh, because the, um, our new platinums, uh, you can use the ethernet on them our 24 volt VDC uh, uses a um, ethernet connection now. There's no longer can you use, even use the um, uh, fiber optics. So again, uh, you will need two ethernet ports. I've seen uh, some hatcheries uh, try to uh, get a uh, duplicator where they use one port and it splits off into two, but it, it usually the, doesn't function that well. So if you're getting a new computer, uh, maybe it's time to get a new computer. <laughs> I, I have a picture here. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of hatcheries I go into, this is what their Hatchcom computer is on, three is on right now. And it's if it's time to get a new computer, let's go ahead and load uh, Hatchcom 4 on there and get all the many new uh, features for the Hatchcom 4. Uh, obtaining a system. So uh, one thing uh, that you would need to do if you want Hatchcom 4, you need to go, you're, you're going to have to contact your James Way sales representative or agent to discuss the needs of your hatchery. Uh, we do not sell Hatchcom 4 on our online store. Uh, uh, and this is in order to ensure you receive the correct package. So uh, all the uh, details I went through in the previous slide, we just wanna make sure you're getting the correct um, uh, Hatchcom 4 uh, uh, product that, that meets your hatchery and your needs. Uh, and current Hatchcom 4 users, 
Uh, you may want to check uh, to see if you're using an older version. Uh, you would uh, check the information icon on your preferences on your layout, and then uh, uh, you would uh, update uh, the 4. Uh, to 4.10 is available. So uh, I think a lot of you may have 4.4.2. Uh, but anyway, we got a list, a lot of new features on top of what we already have. And this will be, uh, again, free of charge to you. So, so let's get those checked and see where you're at. Uh, make sure you're up to date. Um, and uh, each res registrant will receive a link uh, to the Hatchcom 4 demo uh, today. So uh, you'll have this same demo uh, if you would like to, uh, you know, uh, see uh, go through some of the applications used to help uh, and uh, just uh, play around with it. And uh, uh, a lot of people will use it and have their hats come as well, just uh, uh, to make sure that they are using it the correct way. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope you've uh, learned some things and I hope you uh, may have some interest in our hats come uh, and uh, we'll be, uh, turning this back over to uh, Dr. Bramwell, but uh, uh, just uh, if you have any questions or uh, uh, any inquiries about the uh, update uh, or anything like that, you can go to web webinars at jamesway.com, send an email to that. And uh, you also have my personal email and I'll assist you any way I can. So good. <laughs> I'm here. Very, very good. Very good, Phil. A lot of super good information. and. And I know that's one of the things that I like to do when I go to a hatchery initially, just go through all that data that's there. Mm -hmm. You can more easily see aberrations that happen the day before, two days before. You can backdate a week when they had an issue and look at things. I mean, it's just sure. incredibly yeah. valuable. And, and Philip did a great job of um, great tool. discussing that and going over it. Can yeah, you, I, uh, I just, you know, I, I, we didn't spend a lot of detail on each subject uh, simply because there's so many new oh, things. Yeah. That it has, and uh, if if they uh, if if a viewer has a, a particular uh, task that they'd like to learn or or grass or anything, uh, you know, they can get in touch with us, uh, me or Henry uh, or, or you, and and we'll be sure and welcome to that. But yeah. just wanted to mention that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of good, a lot of stuff there for sure. Fun to play with. What, now, what are the main differences between the three and the four? Well, let me let me give you an update to the poll, but. The final poll on there basically was about 50% of the people here did not have hats com at all. Okay. And then of the other 50%, it seemed like about half had three and half had four. You know, and that was so 25% had three, 25% had four, 50% didn't have a ballpark percentage here there. So what is the main difference between three and four? If somebody's currently has three and they're looking at upgrading to four, what um well what uh well, as some of the things I was pointing out, the layout is much different. Uh, it, it is very user friendly. Uh, it, it's, uh, I like to, you know, it's all, it functions almost like a Windows type program now. It's not uh, as, uh, the, to me, after using Hatchcom 3, it is also, it's almost like it is just very cumbersome to work. Uh, you have to, uh, in your reports, you have to go back up to a file menu, bring up the individual machine, uh, those are a couple of the main things that I find uh, uniquely uh, with Hatchcom 4 that I think that they would find um, uh, as a much more useful tool. Uh, you know, the, the, the ventilation aspect, they have Guardian, just several things like that. And if they'll review, I think it's in my, about my fourth slide. Uh, you know, there's about 16 different things that I counted when I stopped counting different between Hatchcom 3 and Hatchcom 4. But there's some things listed on that slide of the new features, I think that they'll find very, uh, uh, they'll, they'll see some of the differences from that. And, and there's a pretty lengthy, I have, you know, detailed description of every version of it, how much change in there, but you know, it's a lot. Yes. Ask for that, you can, you can get that for okay. sure. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing I failed to mention at the beginning is that, you know, Philip just referred back to the four slide in. Uh, you'll get a, an email, follow-up email from this, webinar with a link to the recording of this presentation so you can go back and look at it later. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll just mention this real quick before we get to a couple of questions as I know there seems to be more and more people that are looking at these um, after the fact, tomorrow, next day, later this afternoon. If sure. you have questions even later, 
go ahead and email them in to webinars at jamesboy.com and, and Philip or myself can address those questions after the fact, even if you're not watching, not watching this live. <clears throat> okay, uh, question. Um, can, what other kind of notes can you add to the incubator? For instance, somebody had asked, you know, can you add things like how many eggs are in a machine? And what, where the eggs come from? Where, what hatch are they going to? Who's a supervisor? Can you add that much detail into each machine? Uh, I don't think we could do that right now. You may be able to, in the maintenance program, put some notes there, but I think that is coming. Uh, I think that uh, we have had uh, some uh, uh, interest in that, and uh, uh, it would be good, uh, you know, to look at a machine's uh, history and also, uh, on top of that, be able to maybe uh, save some uh, um, uh, features of that, but yes, um, and we'll keep you informed on that. Yeah. So yeah. So as of now, we don't. But look, look in the future for that. Um, another question is: Is somebody if they've got um, uh, their temperature readings are in Celsius and they want to change it to Fahrenheit or vice versa? I mean, they can do that from hatch thumb, can't they? Uh, yes. The from the from the preference uh, window, they can uh, choose uh, that. They can choose their uh, uh, humidity if they want to read in wet bulb. I know a lot of the uh, uh, our uh, multi-stage customers. Uh, still read in wet bulb and, and that's the way the machine operates. And uh, also CO2 uh, can be either read in parts per million or percentage. So yes, you have several uh, uh, in your preference. Yeah, whatever your preference is. In, this, in the preference section. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, you, and another somebody to ask is, is to use Hatchcom 4, we do need our James Way control panel. I mean, a customer doesn't have those Hatchcom 4s uh be implemented or that is correct now i think that they had our ventilation which i know some of our uh uh competitor hatcheries that are using Tickmaster or whatever uh you can't if they have they can purchase the guardian and then they could be monitoring their system with hatchcom or with guardian okay yeah that would be yeah you know our operation okay um <clears throat> Can can the hatch com four be monitored and and probably monitored and adjusted from the smartphone? I mean, can you can you? Uh, if you have a VPN it? app on there, it's uh it's pretty small, but uh, yes, uh, uh, I think if you you can load a VPN app uh, and log on that way. No. Okay. Um, okay. Another question: so in Some areas have time zone change one or two times a year. Um, what would you recommend running Hatchcom with the date and time of the machines? Would you change them as the time zone changes? Uh, how do you make that adjustment? Uh, the Hatchcom time runs off of the computer it is on. So, so the uh, the, changes, then you've got a couple times a year where you've got an hour. Yeah. One so, hour. yeah. If the compu computer changes uh, the time, uh, say like to daylight savings time, it'll automatically adjust Hatchcom. For that, of course, we may need to adjust, foresee in the future that it's coming up and adjust our set times for that. So, but the Hatchcom runs off of the computer; uh, it is on and adjusts its own times. Uh, I had a unique uh, situation where a, a computer went to uh, an older computer uh, went to like the year 2000, and like all the it just disrupted all the uh, profiles and everything, and. Uh, we finally figured out what the problem was. The computer didn't, the, the, the profiles weren't changed. Uh, Hatchcom didn't, didn't do it. It was just reading what the uh, computer had changed, the date on it. So, uh, that, so, that, in the, so in the times when you do have a daylight change and your computer changes, you're essentially taking an hour off or adding an hour to an incubation time then? Right, you right. Just, yeah. you, gotta just, you gotta know that that's occurring at that time of year. But okay. but the compute but Hatchcom will change to that to that new time. It'll fall, yeah, it'll follow that. Yeah. Um, okay, in, in, interesting question, kind of a, a complicated one. I'm just going to read this. Is uh, Hatchery has all plenum machines controlled by Hatchcom three, what they currently have. The rooms and plenums and HVAC is a mix of several brands. They have Hatchery Planning, Nature Form, and some others. If they upgrade to Hatchcom four, could they integrate all the HVAC into one system? Uh, that would probably be a question for a ventilation department, but uh, my understanding is, yes, if they have, uh, our guardian controls will control most ventilation equipment, 
And if you put in the guardian controls to control that equipment, then it will feed back uh, uh, to the to the Hatchcom four, and we can install it and control from there. But uh, okay. that that would be uh, the limiting factor. Okay, so so that that question then we may um, get some in the ventilation department to further answer that. Well, that, well, well, that is true. Yeah, and it, they would probably, uh, in my uh, experience, they would want to know what type of equipment they had. Uh, you know, if it's a common train or uh, uh, one of the more common uh, style uh, rooftop Aon, uh, you know, sure, we can control those through through our Guardian. So that, that's usually where it comes into play. And also maybe the age of the equipment. But uh, mm -hmm. again, that's how uh, Guardian can be set up to control your ventilation. Okay. In um, can you can you like you know a lot of people look at their hatch their hatch windows on the machines and try to put their hatch windows by the graph can can that be done on their hatch com report with the report as well? Uh, sure, yeah, it's it's the uh, same thing as they're seeing on their uh, uh, machine display. Uh, the machine uh, usually you can only get one hatch on there. With hatch com, you can look back at 160 days of hatching, so you can check out patterns. Uh, see if uh, see if you make adjustments in incubation, how the window changes. Uh, so yeah, a lot of opportunities there by uh, using the Hatchcom graph. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, all right, well, I think we've, we've uh, pretty much covered the questions that we have at this time. Um, again, um, thank you all for, for attending. Have a very good discussion on this. It's like there's a, about half the people that were here don't currently have Hatchcom, maybe you've learned enough about it that you want to look into that I think it's an incredibly valuable tool. Philip's done a great job of explaining that. So uh, as Philip said, it, you know, it's not on our current listing. So contact your sales rep and uh, they can kind of lead you and help you figure out which one, what you need to, to upgrade if you, that's what you choose to do. So um,